Guys, we're in the back bay, and three things I'm gonna look at today is number one, we got insulation going. So we're gonna address some of your questions about what we do before insulation. And we're also gonna talk about the boxes that we built around our recessed lighting and what they're used for. And I'm also gonna show you how the guys handled flattening the floor and how they transitioned from the old floor into the new floor and why they did it. So you guys know we use rock wool a lot on our projects, uh, whether it's the comfort board or the comfort bat. Here we're using the comfort bat uh, and we're using it primarily for sound. So we have adjacent homes on the side of us as well as above us. So we're filling all of our cavities with an R13 comfort bat from Rockwell. And we're also doing the exterior walls as well. The exterior walls are a full masonry wall, but we are still adding some of this comfort bat insulation in front for some additional thermal protection. You guys had asked a question last week when we were talking about how we 3D scan this place. So Tim, our super, actually had Multivista come in. Uh, he moved everything away from the walls and they came in and they shot multi-points all the way around, giving us a 3D model of this space. We'll share what that model looks like in a future episode, uh, but we'll share some footage now uh, from a previous job we did in Cambridge. We had done the same thing there. So things like this whip in the wall that a lot of you guys had uh, comments on, on on social media, if we bury this or you know say this gets buried or even a box gets buried, we're able to uh, open up that app and find out exactly where it is. Uh, it's nice, you know, even if we bury a speaker, speaker wire, a light, um, or say if someone comes back to us, you know, five years from now and says, hey, I'd love to hang a floating shelf right here. Well, what's nice is we can open up that app and figure out, all right, well, we know this is where our wall is and there's a stud here, here, and here. What we can do is on that, we can measure from this point and pull over and it's pretty accurate. It's accurate with under, under an eighth of an inch, even more accurate than that. I just don't know the exact number, but we'll be able to, rather than looking for a stud or trying to find it, we're able to locate exactly where that is for blocking, horizontal blocking. Uh, it's just a nice tool to have. And yes, it's a few thousand dollars to do that, but it's that peace of mind for preventing issues, chasing down issues, chasing down something missing. But like I said, for those future projects, uh, being able to adapt to that. So we're in a brownstone here in Back Bay, and there's another unit above us. In order for this to be code compliant, we need to have a fireproof ceiling, which is achieved with our gypsum wall board. Here in Massachusetts, we plaster it, but that gypsum is gonna create that fire separation layer. Now, there's a couple options when you're installing recessed lighting. If you were to cut a hole here, say a five inch hole and push up a recessed lighting, you've now impacted that fire separation layer because that can is not fire separated. Now there is an option to use a fire rated recessed light, can as I call it. You can use a fire, a fire rated recessed light. However, aesthetically it didn't work with what we were going for from the design. So alternatively, Tim and uh, team built these boxes out of two inches of five eighths, fire caulking and basically built this open box in the cavity where that, that can is going to live. We can come in here with our plaster, go right over it, and then we can cut that hole and slide up our recess light. And now uh, we have that separation above that light. Now that's a code requirement to keep that fire separation and that is how we've chosen to attack it here. Uh, we have to do similar things with any, any, other, any other utilities that go into that, um, ab into that ceiling being above the fire uh, rating, such as our ductwork. So we have to have fire dampers installed on our ductwork. Um, but those are some of the challenges that we're gonna deal with, challenges that we're going to deal with here in, in a multifamily building. Uh, and fire separation is really important for us to make sure that we take very seriously. Now let's talk about what we got going on here because there's a, a plethora of cedar shingles, Luan plywood, original plywood, uh, and then it tapers up to this Advantech. So why don't we start with what we were trying to achieve. We have this U-shaped staircase and this U-shaped staircase is being built off-site. So we need to make sure that when it came all the way up to this floor, that the that step and the floor were completely parallel with each other. So this floor had to be dead level. So this floor has been sistered. We, we showed it in a previous episode and, and it's dead level all the way across. Actually, if you look down here, you can kind of see how they've achieved that. 
they have these strips installed on top of the existing floor joist and essentially ripping them down to different uh, thicknesses in order for this floor to remain flat. This, this area hasn't been done yet. But as you work your way out here and you work your way back to the back of the building, the floor is flat, but in the back, it's actually not level. Uh, and if we were to make it level, we would start impacting the exterior door and the overall, overall elevation. So what the guys have done is as they made their way in here and kept this super level, they basically took the existing floor and started feathering those points in different directions. So what you're seeing is you're seeing all of these, it might, you know, frankly from in, on the camera, it might look hodgepodge or it might look all cut up and kind of funky, uh, but it's actually really well done with a laser level and they've actually set string lines similar to how a mason would do that. And they're using these as reference points to make sure that as you work your way through, it transitions from flat to level. Uh, and ultimately before our floor goes down, there's a floor leveling compound similar to like a mastic glue, which will actually get spread and fill any of these micro edges. So some of these edges, you know, might be an eighth of an inch, but you have that mastic that will go from here into the rest of that space and be able to make this floor completely seamless in its transition. Now we did look at the floor leveling compound or the, you know, the, the gypsum material or the cementitious material. It just didn't make sense. Uh, and you know, a few days worth of good carpentry skills here uh, got us what we were, what we were looking to achieve. And now we're prepped and ready for our kitchen. One last thing I want to point out, um, when, when Tim got this place all cleaned up and ready for a scan, uh, we have our spray, paint li spray painted lines on the ground. So he's went around and marked all of our stud locations. Uh, you can see all the way over here, um, everything has been marked. And then any location that we have something that's not a stud, he's went as far to mark that in a different color. So for example, right here, I see a blue line. So if I peel that insulation back, I know that that is my gas line for the future stove.